Gaudete. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Indeed the Lord is near. Indeed Indeed the the Lord Lord is is near. near. Give glory to our God, the Father and the Son, and also the Holy Spirit, eternal three in one. Indeed the Lord is near. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Indeed the Lord is near. Indeed the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty Almighty God God, and to you, you, my brothers brothers and and sisters, that I I have greatly sinned in my my thoughts and in my words, in what what I have done and what I have failed failed to do. do. Through my fault, through my my fault, through my my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Mary, ever Virgin, all the the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray pray for for me me to the the Lord Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, do not be discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. 
He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Cry out with joy and gladness for A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. 
Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory right. to you. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What should we do? What are we to do? It's a question I heard lots of this past week on Friday after the tragic events in Connecticut. I was out visiting homebound, and practically every home that I went into 
he or she had the television on and the sad word of that tragedy and almost without exception, that question came up, what are we to do? What should we do? Well, there are two options. We can easily cave in to the despair, the darkness, the violence, just throw our hands up in the air and say we are helpless. But as Christians, we are not called to cave in to the darkness and the despair of this world. It's always been there in its brokenness. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Those words ring out very clearly this morning on this Rejoice Sunday of Advent, this third Gaudete Sunday. Rejoice. Rejoice despite the uncertainties of this world. Rejoice because the Lord is with us even in the midst of the darkness that does seem so overwhelming. It is a very Christian thing for us to do what we do at this time of year. The nights are long and dark. They're at their longest right now. And daylight is short. And yet, we as Christians proclaim the light of Christ as we prepare to celebrate the feast of light and his birth, that Christ comes in our midst. He is nestled among us in the darkness of this world to give us hope and to give us strength to endure these uncertain times. What should we do? Those people asked John the Baptist that very question 2,000 years ago, and we need to continue asking that question today. What are we to do? I offer you three things, three important things that will help us to make sense in this crazy world that we live in. The first is to pray, to pray always. Paul just told us that in that second reading. We need to pray. My favorite little motto or saying is to, we need to pray hard and we need to pray well. We pray hard. That means we have to be praying. We need to define a portion of our day in prayer, 20 minutes at least. We need to pray. We need to be in that habit of praying. And we need to pray well. The Lord is not looking for lip service. He is not looking for quantity, but the quality of our prayers coming from our hearts, not only from our lips. And when you really think about what prayer is, it is divine communication. It is a conversation. We talk, but then we are also to listen and listen well, because the Lord will speak. He will speak. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith in me, says Jesus. And we will hear those calming words, even in the most troubled of times. 
We need to pray hard and we need to pray well. Secondly, we need to repent. John the Baptist called those wonderful people who were hungering and searching, and he told those good people, repent. And Jesus, in his inauguratory words in the gospel, repent and believe in the good news. Repent. How do we repent? We need to acknowledge the sin in our lives. We need to call it by name. We need to confess it. We need to face it head on and then ask for the mercy and the grace of God to make changes in our lives because repentance calls for change. Sin is not something. Sin is the lack of good. That's what evil is. It's where God is not. Our purpose in this world is to conform our minds and our wills to God. And when we can achieve that, then we are fully holy. We are one with God and we sin no more. But all of us here knows that we have many miles to travel yet in that journey, that journey of perfection. We need to pray hard and pray well, and we need to repent of our sins and do penance. And finally, the third thing of what we are to do is we are called to build families. The evil one in his attacks, notice where he attacks the most, the family. The family is the nursery of God's holiness where the word is given as gift to our children. But family is not just husband and wife and children. Family extends out into the community. So no matter what our situation in life is at this moment, whether we live alone or live in a household of 25 people, we are called to build families to build them with God's grace. And we can only do that if we are praying every day and that we are repenting of our sins. And that's what gives us the strength to build those families. It's easy for us to be discouraged. It's easy for us to cave in to the darkness but as I said, as Christians, that's not what we're called to do. The lights of this wreath are burning brighter and brighter each week, penetrating the darkness. It's a sign. And signs are always pointing us to something far greater. The light of Christ is what must lead us and protect us, strengthen us, and give us hope. This Advent time is about hope and joy and patience. It will lead us to love, the love of Christ. It's so intense. Feel that love. Feel it and smile. God is with us.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. John the Baptist announced to his listeners that one who is mightier than he is coming. With confidence, we lift our needs to this mighty Savior. Our response is, come, Lord Jesus. O wisdom, you came forth from the mouth of the Most High, reaching from beginning to end. You ordered all things mightily and sweetly, Come and teach us the way of prudence, we pray. Come, Come Lord Jesus. O Lord and ruler of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush and on Mount Sinai gave him your law. Come and with outstretched arm redeem us, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. O root of Jesse, you stand as a sign for the peoples. Before you, kings shall keep silence, and to you all nations shall have recourse. Come, save us, and do not delay, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. O key of David of the house of Israel, you open and no man closes. You close and no man opens. Come and deliver from the chains of prison those who sit in darkness. In particular, we pray for Paul Coleman as he battles illness. We pray, come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O radiant dawn, radiance of the light, eternal and son of justice, come and enlighten those who sit in the shadow of death. Keep in your loving embrace the precious little children and the adults who have returned to your arms. As we hold in our prayerful embrace all the people of Newtown, Connecticut. We also remember in prayer Kathy Lennon, whose funeral was celebrated yesterday. We remember all the dead, in particular, Marge and George Lett, Robert Pinzer, and Tom Netta. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us also remember in our prayers the repose of the soul of Virginia Nolan, who went home to the Lord in this past hour. We pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O saving God, you hear those who cry out to you. Answer our prayers. Help us to ready ourselves for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. Amen.
those who have gifts from the giving tree are welcome to bring them up at this time. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord our sacrifice and praise and glory of his name. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. is 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save, save us, us, save your heart of the world. I pray your cross and resurrection. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Benedict, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The 
the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a quilt that needs blessing. And it's to be given to Sharon Sawiski, or a friend of Sharon Sawiski. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the Alpha and Omega. You know our yesterdays, our today, and our tomorrows. May your blessing be upon this quilt. May the one to whom it will be given be covered in hope, kept in joy, graced with peace, wrapped in love, knowing always that you are with them and that they are not alone. We ask these blessings in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. See you.